come here, get off. So welcome to this week's episode of The Turn On. Um, just a little note before we get started. Um, today's book handles some pretty intense uh, issues. So this is our official trigger warning. Um, be good to yourself and your uh, and your spirit and mind. So if this gets too tough, cut it off. I promise we'll be back again next week as well. So um With that, we are reading Seven Days in June by the lovely Tia Williams. It was just released in June of 2021. And sit back, relax, get your wine, your weed, whatever you need, and enjoy. Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Go to sleep. Can't sleep, she murmured. I'm distracted. Why? He turned his head to face her, and then their eyes locked in silent conversation. It was all so dreamlike. Minutes were melting into each other. Their blinks became slower, the two of them wearing syrupy, satisfied smiles. Finally, Eva delivered an answer that neither of them believed. I'm trying to memorize this room. This good material. Maybe it'll show up in a book, she said, yawning full drowsily. Honestly, as stressful as writing is, I can't imagine not doing it. It's heady, right? He muttered, eyes focused on her mouth. Yeah, the power's so good. Making complete strangers laugh, cry, get turned on. It's better than sex. Is it, though? I wouldn't remember, actually, she admitted. I'm at the sexual equivalent of rock bottom. It's been ages. You? (laughs) But you're such a filthy writer. I have a filthy imagination, she corrected. And sometimes it's enough, she thought. But mostly, it's lonely. Cece had once diagnosed Eva as touch-starved. One of her authors wrote a self-help book about it. When someone went too long without touch, they became hypersensitive to the slightest graze. There was truth to it. Last weekend, Eva had almost had an orgasm when her hairstylist shampooed her. And her hairstylist was the grandmother of six. Eva had been consciously avoiding Shane's touch all day. If he so much as brushed up against her, she might explode. I'm at rock bottom too, says Shane. I've never had sober sex. Eva gasped. That long? Why? Shane didn't know how to answer this. He'd had a lot of sex with too many women in increasingly depraved ways. A lot of it good, most of it a blur, and it was a relief to stop. Normal, healthy people didn't use sex as a post vodka chaser. Just never got around to it, he said. I don't miss it. Eva said with a dismissive flick of her wrist. Honestly, I'm practically a virgin again. It probably hurt. I'm so backed up it'll be over in two seconds. Oh, good thing we're not having sex. I, for one, am relieved, says Shane with a wolfish smile. Eva giggled into her palm despite herself. Why is it still so easy to talk to you? Shane gazed at her until the glint in his eye faded a bit. Always was. It's just just who we are. Do you remember everything, she whispered, about us? It took him a while to answer. It's funny. The past decade is a blur, but I remember every detail of that week. I was hoping I'd romanticize it over the years, that we weren't real. Her words sounded delicate, breakable. There was a quietly hypnotic, faint sound of a piano, 
and the incense swirled softly. And then Eva felt a familiar pull. Just like when they were 17, there was no space between them. There was an overwhelming need to get closer, always. Unthinking, Eva slipped her hand into his. Shane squeezed it and then brought her hand to his mouth, pressing a lingering kiss into her palm. She gasped, electricity tearing through her. It was the slightest touch, but she felt it everywhere. Eva had been imprisoned in pain for so long that she'd forgotten how good feeling good was. Her entire body roused, and suddenly she was aware of everything. Her skin, her cells, the bones under her skin, heart fluttering, core throbbing. Touch starved. Shane watched her reaction with lidded eyes. Then he lightly ran his lips along the inside of her wrist. She let out the tiniest whimper, her back arching. It was electric. Breathless and embarrassed by her reaction, she sat up, burying her face in her hands. No. They were in a public space, behind an unlocked door. She was a mother. And Shane was a bold-faced name. Were they really fated to get caught dry humping in an art world pop-up? The welcome sign said no touching. If they got caught, book Twitter would implode and Audrey would fling herself into the East River. But then she opened her eyes. There was Shane, gazing up at her, looking for all the world like the reckless, irresistible boy he'd once been. But now, with experience and grown man gravitas and a rugged North African surfing scar and the most fuckable crinkles around his eyes. And nothing mattered. There was no hell she wouldn't risk for this man. And he knew it. Come here, he said. Eva straddled him, her hair falling in his face. Shane ran his hands up the back of her thighs and over her ass and then... Not gently. He gripped her hips and pulled her down against him. Their lips were inches away from each other. Twenty questions, he whispered. Go. Why'd you really come to see me? To ask for the favor. Liar. Shane tossed her over onto her back, pinning her wrists above her head with one hand. Instinctively, her legs drew up, wrapping around his waist. Why'd you come? For you. Her hips stuttered against his, desperate for friction. I wanted you. You got me, he rasped, leaving hot, sucking kisses down her throat. Your turn. Eva trembled beneath him, his mouth scrambling her brain. She couldn't ask Shane the obvious questions. Where'd you go? Why'd you leave? How could you? Over the years, she trained herself not to care about these answers. Besides, this moment wasn't about him. It was about her. So she went for something easier. Do you ever think of me? Lightly, he ran his tongue along her neck, up to her ear, nibbling on her lobe. I never learned how to stop. Oh. She said, and then shakily added, your turn. So did you? Romanticize us, asked Shane, eyes catching hers. Or were we real? We were real, she whispered, almost inaudibly. Then he ground himself against her and she moaned. Yes, she gasped, then and now. Abruptly, Shane freed her wrists and cradled her face. She slid her hands up his back, gripping his shoulders. And slowly, he lowered his face toward hers, then stopped. He dipped down, then paused. He'd been waiting a lifetime to have her like this, buzzing for him, craving him, desperate. And he wanted to savor it. But she let out an impatient groan, digging her nails into his shoulders, and Shane caved. 
He crashed his mouth into hers, drawing her into a luscious, searing kiss. The delicious shock of it was enough to make Eva freeze, but then she melted into him, lost in the heat of his mouth, the slide of his tongue, the teasing nip of his teeth, until she was unable to form a coherent thought beyond yes and want and Shane, Shane, Shane. He kept at it, kissing her senseless. It went backward in intensity, slowing down to a soft, searing smolder, almost too hot to take. They stopped only to catch their breath. One more question, he said. We're still playing? She wet her lips with her tongue. Yeah. Shane glanced toward the door, then back down at her, eyes glinting in the dark wickedly. Are you still bad? Yes, she said without thinking, reaching down the palm and stick huge and hard in his jeans. She rubbed along the length of him, teasing out a low groan. Are you? Yeah, he said, pushing her dress up and slipping off her strapless bra. Dipping down, he ran his soft, hot mouth along the swell of her breast, his teeth catching on her nipple. He swirled his tongue around it, sucking deliciously, and then, his stubble scraping her skin, he dragged his mouth to the other. Her hapless, shuddery gasp were making him so hard he wondered how he survived this. Yeah, he growled against her breast. I'm still bad. Why? T tell me. Shane lifted his head, taking her in. Eva looked radiant, so slutty with her dress pulled up under her arms, showing off sheer panties, curls everywhere, panting, trembling, lips raw and swollen from kissing. She had a bruise blossoming on her hip where he gripped her. Because I'm old enough to know better, said Shane, drawing her into a quick, dirty tongue kiss. But I'm going to do it anyway. Do what? Fuck you. Here. And then they tore into each other. Frantically, Shane managed to get her soap panties off one leg, and Eva pushed down his jeans and boxers, but there was no time to get all the way naked. He dug into his wallet for an ancient condom, offering a silent prayer to several deities that it still worked, and slipped it on. Then, covering her with his tall, strong body, Shane sank into Eva with excruciating slowness, careful not to hurt her. It did hurt, but the burn was exquisite. Wanting more, Eva cupped his ass and pushed him deeper. She gasped when Shane kissed her quiet, driving into her with steady, deep strokes, and all she could do was take it, wave after wave of pleasure. When he felt her whole body begin to shudder against his, he slid his hand down between their sweat-slick, half-clothed bodies and dipped his middle finger over her clit. He rubbed her slowly, but fucked her hard. And it was so good, so intense, that it sent her over the edge, shattering her to stillness. And when Shane followed seconds later, he put his mouth to her ear, and finally said it. Eva, he rasped, voice wrecked. Eva, Eva. He uttered it like an incantation, the only name that ever mattered. And Eva, heart slamming into her ribs, clung to him in the violet-tinged darkness, feeling both lost and found. Okay, so welcome back. Thank you, Kim Reed, for that lovely reading. Um, so this one was a lot. Uh, do you want to give the you give the um the synopsis? Because if I do it, I'm gonna tell too much. Okay. So this book stars um crap, how am I blanking on her name? 
And I literally just read it. Eva? Oh, Eva. Um, also known as Jean <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and she uh, is an erotica writer, which was really the first thing I think that drew us into this one, um, mm-hmm. who suffers with chronic pain and tries very hard to balance writing with taking care of her daughter um, as a single parent and she doesn't really make much time for herself to do anything else like fall in love and she finds herself through a series of events reunited with um, I guess her first love and Mm -hmm. this book follows their um, re- Union, and the scene that we just read is uh, the first day that they spent together. Which yes, is dope. yeah. So you said, uh, do you really think that it was um, that she hadn't fallen in love because of time or because of other situations? Uh I think she wasn't necessarily open to it, but I also think so, you know, she's someone who has been divorced um, and there there was something that was really striking that she at some point asked her husband, like, was it her ex-husband? Was it hard to love her? And he was like, no, I just, I thought that you were a problem to be taken care of instead of someone to just be loved and I think even before he said that that she had internalized that and that it kept her from being able to feel like she could be close to people or reveal what she saw as a weakness because she worried that she would be a burden on folks and that kept her from being able to put herself into a position to be able to fall in love with anyone yeah I agree I just wanted to call out the time (laughs) Because I don't yeah, think it yeah. was time. I, I don't I You're right. think time That's was That's the story just an she excuse. told herself. Yeah, and time was an else. excuse, you know? Yeah. So um For sure. Yeah. So there were a lot of things that just like were striking about the story. Um one of the one of the things that we know is that she's a she's an erotic writer, which like we said, we were like ding ding ding. But also she is a single mom of this child that is a lot dynamic (laughs) (laughs) dynamic that's the best way to put it she is a spitfire um Mm -hmm. and it was interesting to me because i feel like parenting and being a person they're two vast very different let's just Right with Roll with you. Parenting yeah. and being a and being like an adult are two very different things. Both of which you were fucking clueless, but you gotta make <laughs> it look like you got your shit together to a point, you know. And then you layer mm-hmm. them on top of each other. And I think this book really showed how you can be a parent, you can swear you have all your shit together, your parents and your kid, and then you put your kid to bed after you, you know, just lay down the law. And you're like texting some boy because you aren't sure if he likes you. You know, yeah. like it's, it was just, yeah. Like I, I think one of the biggest things that I had to kind of deal with through therapy was recognizing that my mom was just a person, my dad was just a person. They had the, they had parenting and parenthood thrown on, you know, like added to mm-hmm. who they were. But the other stuff the doesn't day, go away there's still people trying to figure shit out. Mm-hmm. And this showed that, you know, because I, I feel like also when I'm dating now, it's just like, Do he, does he like me? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> bitch, you over here <laughs> managing a household budget and, you know, you're doing all this other stuff. But at the right. end of the day, we're people that are just trying to figure this shit out. That's true. You feel yeah. that way as a, as or now that you're on the other side. Yeah, I still feel that way. I mean, yes. Like So yesterday, our AC was out, and it got to be like 92 degrees in here. Mm-hmm. And I... Which is hot for you because you still keep your house 
warm. But anyway. Yes, but it was hot and it was humid and it was literally yeah. unbearable for people with asthma trying to sit mm-hmm. here. And I had a meeting with the client starting in two minutes when I was just like, we can't stay here. But also didn't have time to, and it was on Zoom. So it was like, <laughs> we ran down to the transit. car. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had to do my calls on video from the car, but at least we like got some relief from the air. And then I was like, well, let's, we'll go get gas. We'll go get dinner. You know, I, you know we'll, like, you know me, right? And I live below you, right? I know that. But I also know that I was at your house on Sunday and my allergies were so bad, even with taking an extra pill that I woke up in the middle okay. of the night all fucked up and had to like, yeah, like yeah. use my saline and shit so I wouldn't get a sinus infection. So I, and so this is the part that I'm getting to. Mm-hmm. My anxiety makes it really hard for me to person, to adult and to parent. And yeah. so... Like I was trying to explain to my partner because we ended up going to his place because he doesn't have pets and it was just too fucking hot here. And I was like, you know, I was like, I could go at first. I would, we were going to try to stay and we we're going to just like sleep in the living room and make it a sleepover. And I'm trying to like make it fun for the kid because yeah. I'm trying to parent while also trying to figure it out. But, but I would have to have come all the way downstairs to and look through the basement to try to find the air mattress and. I know that for people who don't have brains that are broken, that doesn't seem like a difficult task. Your brain is but not broken. Me, it's just a little I'm special. okay with the, it's, it's got some, it's got some fucked up parts and that's okay. It's just part of who I am. It don't, it don't bother me. It's just hard sometimes, but it was like, so I have to, I have to repeat what's going on more than once in order to get down there to get it. I got to look for, I got to do that while my kid doesn't freak out that I had to leave her. The house is dark because we're not turning on lights because we're trying to keep it cool. She's trying to say like all of these things are going through my broken brain and feeling completely overwhelming. I'm Mm -hmm. sweating fucking buckets. I can barely breathe. And I, all I'm trying to think about is how do I manage just like the logistics of this? How do mm-hmm. I manage the anxiety that is coming up around having to deal with the logistics and having to ask for help with that? Mm-hmm. And how do I manage her and her anxiety? And I'm trying to do all of this at the same fucking time. And yeah. only one time that I, she, it was something that she asked me and I, I didn't snap. I was just like, hey. Could you just do what I asked you to do? Because that was all I could manage Mm -hmm. (laughs) to keep from, like, losing my shit. But, like, to me, like, like yesterday perfectly encapsulated what it is like to try to do all of those things at one time and to feel like you're failing on every front all at the same fucking time. Yeah. It was not great. (laughs) It was not great. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It is what it is. And part of my issue is that it's hard for me to ask for help when I'm in the middle of stuff. So it is just a thing. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. If my partner hadn't said, hey, get your shit and come over here, I would have been trying to figure it out on the floor. Yeah. Like when you sent me the text saying, I was like, wait, she ain't say nothing, but all right. You don't even have ice up there. You can at least come down for some ice. No. (laughs) <laughs> Everything felt so I'm messing with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Parenting, being per- parenting and personing are the the clash between the two is just ugh. And me and dating and relationships and all of that. Mm-hmm. I just ugh. This and this showed all of that. Um also with like how, you know, you could have like Everything could be blowing up at the same time. You know, Eva was do- dealing with her health. She was dealing with the kid. She was dealing with, and, and also. She had a book due. The book due. She was dealing with the nigga, pop up. the nigga and the show <laughs> uh, and the movie. You know, it was just yeah. a lot going on. And yeah, on top of that, like. I guess we'll go into it. So uh, Eva suffers with really bad migraines. Mm -hmm. Um, And to not only have all of this happening, but then something that, you know, like, 
I don't want to like turn this into the oppression Olympics. You said that before, <laughs> but you know, like to have something that can truly take you out that you just have to like shut everything down, no matter mm-hmm. what, just like layered even, even more on top of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so Eva struggled with her uh, migraines and for a really long time, it's a like damn near towards the end of the book where she like recognized it as a disability. Yeah. It was like, and, and it was more just out of like frustration. Like, you know what? God damn it. I do have a disability. I have an invisible disability and this is what it is. Right. Um, and it's not a shortcoming and it's not something that she's not doing right. And yeah. Something or something that she has to hide. Yeah. Yeah. Are I'm you keeping looking at me because so you want you me can... to talk about my uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So what was really interesting to me is that I did not realize how much this book paralleled my life until you called me and was like, hey, bitch, this your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, the mom raising the kid really, I mean, at least her co-parent lives in Datafornia, but like, you know, yeah. I ain't whatever. Um but writer, invisible disability, like all of that. And it was interesting because this is something that I have really been dealing with over the last year, um, just as a person and also like in therapy, because that's what therapy is for. Um, so folks who listen to the show regularly will know that, and I don't, I don't really talk much because again, you don't want to, you know, delve into your stuff, but like, I have been battling who the fuck knows what with my health for the last year. And it has been like dominoes falling. Like we figure out or no, more like whack-a-mole. Like every time we figure out one thing that's wrong with me, some old shit pop up or the yeah. treatment for one thing creates another Call thing. Something else, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and so where we are right now, um, and the main thing is that I have fatigue that just fucking puts me out. Um, where I have days where it is very difficult for me to get out of bed. And that was really what started it and led to a whole bunch of other stuff, including a liver disease diagnosis. Yo, one thing that they never tell you, they always tell you when you go on a birth control pill that it can cause blood clots. No one ever tells you that you can end up with something called drug-induced liver injury, which is what I was diagnosed with last year. So for any of you who have weird numbers on your uh, liver enzymes when you get your complete metabolic uh, test at your annual physicals and nobody knows what's going on, if you are on birth control pill, it is rare, but it is a thing that happens and it's a thing that has happened to me (laughs) and it's Mm. turned into a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, My liver is fine now after two surgeries and a whole bunch of stuff, but um, the fatigue still remains. And so... Now we're at a point where I'm seeing a neurologist all the time um, to try to diagnose what we think it is. And um, if, I, when, if I get a diagnosis, I'll share. But essentially, it makes it so that it is really hard for me to do a lot of the things. I've always been a person who could work out like, you know, like it was nothing. And I get, you know... I have to walk, really, which is great because it's my favorite form of exercise. But I used to be able to walk for an hour and then go to the gym and lift weights for 45 minutes and get on the treadmill for another 30. And I just am unable in this body to do those things at this point. Um, Hopefully medication will get me there again, but I'm not there now. And it's been um, difficult for me to adjust and also to have these conversations around, oh, and I have migraines, which have started back over, yeah, that part, um, mm-hmm. to the point where I am now getting uh, monthly injections to try to quell them. Um, they're not as bad as Eva's in the book, but they they put a bitch down. They're not mm-hmm. great. Um, but so a lot of, besides just the physical aspects of what I've been dealing with over this last year, There's also the exhaustion that comes with dealing with the medical industrial complex, which ironically, I guess not, I'm writing about. You know, my next book is about black women and racism and health. And it's been interesting um, how my own shit has been unfolding as I have been researching and writing. Mm -hmm. And at one point it was my health had gotten so bad that I had to put aside the book because it was quite frankly triggering. Um, to deal yeah, with I'm like, that this sounds like this. it's turning it. I mean, 
Yeah. This will have a memoir aspect to it. And and I think a lot of it's going to end up coming through in this book, um, yeah. which already is shot through with personal stories mm-hmm. that some people are not going to want to see, um, mm-hmm. but that are really fucking relevant and grounded in the, the work. Um, but the other part of it is dealing with the fact mm-hmm. that this has become a disability and it's an invisible one, which, you know, I don't know that a lot of folks are necessarily um, that it's a concept that they understand that there can be things wrong with people that we don't know. I think it's come up a bit over this last year in dealing with COVID with the assholes who are upset with people for whatever reason who choose to wear a mask. I am one of them. I've always had a compromised immune system. Um, but you never know what the fuck folks are going through. And I think that folks have thought about that a little bit when they wanted to um, over the past year with COVID. But it's made me think about um, my own internalized ableism and mm. what it meant to call myself a disabled person and also to think about, you know, I had some issues around what it meant what felt like taking up a space that didn't belong to me. Mm. Mm. Um, Because again, that's where the ableism comes in. Right. So where, who am I to say that I'm disabled when this person is going through this thing that I deem to be worse Mm -hmm. than what I'm going through. And how does your ableism make it so that you can think that someone's just, you know what I mean? It's worse than yours. I I totally get it. Yeah. And so that's work that I've been doing. Um, but also realizing that, you know, my, my therapist is like, well, you know, you you do a lot of advocacy work in a lot of areas. And some of them are areas that you are a member of the community and some of them are areas where you're not. She was like, so how do you balance that? And I was like, well, my work is about lifting up the voices of other people and centering, you know, folks who are pushed to the margins. That's what I do. And I was like, so I guess this is not really any different. I already try to do that with folks in the disabled community. It doesn't mean that I'm pushing myself out here as some fucking organizer or anything like that. It's just another part of my identity that informs the work that I do. And she's like, well, then I'm what you worried about, bitch. Um, but it's been something that I have been wrestling with, um, yeah. the ways that I look at myself and the ways that I relate to the world. And I recognize that in Eva, in reading this mm-hmm. book. Yeah. 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 Wow. That was, that was a word. Um, <sighs> related, unrelated. I was talking to this guy and he was like, are you bisexual? And I'm like, no, I have sex alone, but I'm not. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> I don't, he was like, okay. Ah. And I, and I, that's the same thing. I'm like, I feel too, like me having sex with women. One, it's a new thing. You know, like, actually doing it is a new thing. And it's always in the context of a threesome. And I generally present and live as a straight woman. And so it feels like I, you know, like to say that, yes, I'm bisexual. Yes, I'm queer. It feels like I'm stealing mm-hmm. someone else's. I, You know, like, it's like, how, what gives me the right to say I this? Learned. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, what gives me the right to say this when I am, you know, like when... I don't have it. I mean, I am a black woman, but, you know, I don't have the shit that bisexual lesbian women have right. to go through, you know, so I totally get it. I think we see that uh, among our mixed friends that present as mm. white, mm-hmm. even if they want unwillingly, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think what we have to what it comes down to is one realizing that just like how we say that other folks can identify in the ways that make the most sense to them we we have zero problem (laughs) extending that same grace to other folks but we don't do it to ourselves and uh i think it's really important that we find our way to that space for ourselves and you know Lots of things can be true at the same time. We can do that while also holding the fact that we have privilege, right? I have privilege in the fact that my disability is invisible. And Mm. so unless I let you into what is going on, I mean, yeah, you may see me and be like, why this bitch, why did she just, Mm -hmm. why did she just say she need to move from this table to this couch Mm -hmm. (laughs) because she can't sit up no more? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, 
but I have the privilege of being able to not be identified in that way and not be discriminated against in that way unless somebody is around me long enough to get to the end of the day and be like a holy fuck yeah. uh, and you have the privilege of being able to present as straight and folks to hourly only see you you know engaging with men and so you're not dealing with the phobia that you know can be attached to that and that's just that's the privilege it's like we can recognize the privilege that we hold as cis women over our trans siblings right mm. it's the same thing yeah. And we can use that privilege in ways like talking about it on this show um, that help us to advocate for everybody in the community without feeling like we're taking up a space that doesn't belong to us. And who's to say that it doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in the vein of Eva living your life, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you living Eva's life, whichever way. Uh, she, I'm older than her. She broke down the whole relationship with her daughter Audrey's dad wait what was her daughter's full name I loved it, it was Audrey oh my god she was named after everybody Tony, Tony. yeah yeah uh, yeah she was I know she, she was named like for Audrey like four Moore, Tony Morrison there was somebody yeah yeah, but, yeah. okay well I will find it <laughs> but um the co-parenting relationship how she and I think mm. that so many women deal with this except a lot of them don't I'm sorry I am like breaking out having some sort of allergic reaction and so my entire body itches so like i am that's why you keep seeing me scratch myself Sorry, i didn't y'all. notice but are you okay do you need to i don't like fall out it's just i girl i am my mama's daughter we used to laugh at my mama because she would she would like look at anything too hard and like break out in rashes and welts oh. and <laughs> The older I get, the more I get like her. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why y'all see me scratching oh, all the time. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, her daughter's name was Audra Zora Tony Mercy Moore. Exactly. Like, yeah. So she named her Zora New Hurston. Yeah. I loved, I loved <laughs> it. I loved it. Um, so she was talking about how breaking down like the relationship with her dad, like her ex husband and her daughter's mm-hmm. dad. And it was like, look, He's a good guy. He's her dad, but he literally is the fun dude that shows up every, you know, every year. Yeah, she gets to go hang out in California for the summer, and that's what that is. Yeah. But the I'm day sorry, y'all. I just realized my mic was backwards. However, I'm loud. So I don't I'm about think to say- that'll be a problem. <laughs> You did just get louder, though. That's funny. <laughs> Mommy, y'all. Hopefully our uh, engineer can make those changes. You got this. Um, Yeah, so I thought that was really... Uh, it was real, like, damn, you know this. Um, Tia yeah. wrote her ass off in this she book did. because it was just like, damn, like... You just explain so many women's lives. And mm-hmm. yeah, like I I think we both represent that to various degrees. Um, yeah. I mean, like mm-hmm. my co-parenting relationship, he's a little more involved primarily because it's like, a, hey, this needs to happen today at this time. And you're like, okay, you know, but mm-hmm. other ends of the spectrum is <laughs> like, now, what's your teacher's name? What grade you going into? So, yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. Um. Dog, this story had so much fucking trauma to it. Like, there was yeah. lots of drug use, drug abuse alcoholism what that was that yeah alcoholism yeah. it was so it was fun. pretty tough it was pretty tough yeah. because the way that they tell the story you know that what's the guy's name shane you know that shane was significant mm-hmm. but you don't really know like why it all you know and so by the time you get to the end of the story you have a full picture of what of like their their relationship, the entire relationship. 
But even like in the beginning, the bits and pieces you see, you're just like, fuck, like this is just tough. And it shows how a parent, a parent's unresolved trauma gets dumped on the kid. And then it also shows how just life trauma, it had, the shit has to get out, right? Like it's, it's got to come out of you. And either it's going to come out of you and dump into drugs and alcohol. It might come out of you dumping into drugs, alcohol, and kid. But the shit's got to come out of you. Sorry. <laughs> that was <laughs> a mess. <laughs> it was absolutely, we saw the impact with Eva of generational trauma. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, we see how that shit was just handed down like a ring. Um, and we saw in Shane how, I mean, his, his shit was already fucked up, but then an event just kind of changed the course of his life. Yeah. Yeah. And so two things, one, an event can change the course of your life. So things could have went one way or another way, you know, cause it seemed like everything was really, I mean, you never know something else could have happened. But it really felt like things were okay and good with him until this event happened. Mm -hmm. And and it just completely changed the course of a situation. Uh, Well, it it was interesting because while my childhood was not Eva's, um, it for damn sure was the way that my childhood could have been. Yeah, had my custody situation. <laughs> had I not had my dad not gotten custody of me, um, I think about this all the time. Honestly, that felt like you know those choose your own adventure books. Those were my yes, shit yeah, and that's how I that's how I look at it. It's like, it's, and that's also why it's difficult for me to pass judgment on people, mm-hmm. and like I hate. And I'm saying that I haven't in the past, but I hate when people like take videos of like somebody on drugs on the street and they laughing at them. You know, it's like, look at her doing that. And it's like, if it weren't for a stroke of chance, that could have been you, that could have been your mama. Exactly. Exactly. It could have been anybody. And so it's, it's really difficult for me to even, you know, like that Mm -hmm. stuff seems real. Just like, oh, because I have had so many situations in my life where I look back and I'm like, if it weren't for this one thing, shit could have went completely left. Yep. You know? And yep. um, also as a parent, and I want to ask you about this, you could see how Eva was super intentional to raise her daughter and not, pass on that trauma Mm -hmm. and I think um I actually see it a lot like with people that I may have grown that I've grown up with you know we all grew up in like you know really not so great situations and then we have kids and our kids are fucking assholes (laughs) we're like I want to give my kid the world it's like "Mm." And so then you're trying to like balance the like that balance. Yeah, so find that balance. Assholes, yo. Yeah. You gotta know how to fucking clean a tub. I mean, you ain't gotta take a bath by heating the water on the stove like I did, but you exactly. gotta know how to clean this tub. <laughs> exactly. Like and I try, I try I catch myself all I was talking to someone last Sunday night, because he was talking about his son and he was like mm-hmm. and he started to say, when I was hit, he said I ain't going to do that. I'm like, yep, I I totally get it because you don't want your kid. You work Mm -hmm. so that your kids can have it easier. You work and try to be your best so that you're not passing down that trauma. But -hmm. it's also very hard to be like, my kid has no, like no street smarts. I don't want to say common sense, but like, (laughs) um, and I can't help but think like, damn, When I was your age, I had all the street smarts and common sense because I was in a fucked up position. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And so you don't. That shit kept your ass alive. 
Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's so sad. It's so sad. But you could see how she was, you know, raising a really cool, a really cool kid. Yeah. And she was working hard to do that. I, this weekend, we finally watched Widows and um, Daniel Kaluuya is in it. Who? It's uh, Viola Davis. Really? He played Fred Hampton. Chairman Hampton. I mean, I know who that is. I'm talking oh, okay. about this movie. Yo, Girl, come on oh, now. It's, uh, it's good. It's, I'm not uh, that bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it, it's about some women who are widowed because their husbands are criminals and some shit happens and they come together to pull off a heist. Is this the... Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so I saw this one on the plane and it had Tiffany, ha- Tiffany Haddish. No. Melissa McCarthy. No. And <laughs> the girl from Mad Men. Elizabeth Olsen. Oh, no, this is not that at all. Okay. It's a whole different vibe. Um, but yeah. so anyway, mm-hmm. there's, there's, Daniel Kaluuya's character is, um, I try not, yeah. He, so there's, there's a meme that shows him and he like looking at this nigga like this. And there, I remember on Twitter, somebody was like, uh, you know, parents who say they want to give their kids a better opportunity. And then those same parents when they see their kids thriving, like, <laughs> And I'm like, yeah. yeah, like you, you want these niggas to do well, but it's also like, yo, you need you can't you can't be a trash person. You need you to want them to have an easy well. life, yeah. But, but you, don't you want- also need to be able to take care of yourself and to have empathy. And I remember our therapist asked me once. She was like, um, if you could do it all again like knowing what you know and what you've learned about yourself and all of this stuff would you want to like go through your trauma again to become this person i was like fuck nah <laughs> like i would much rather have yeah. these lessons and have not gone through that <laughs> read them in a book right Here's somebody so else I, tell you about it yeah right and so i feel like a lot of what parenting means to me is like trying to impart these lessons in a way that is not harmful so mm-hmm. like how we were talking about having a discussion about gaslighting like i learned about gaslighting because it was done to me by my family my kid is learning about it because we're Three having two. conversations yeah. exactly yeah. about what it means and talking about definitions and examples and ways to combat it and how to draw boundaries and we can teach our kids these things without traumatizing them ultimately yeah. is <laughs> where i'm going with this um, and it's one of the reasons it's, you know, I'm not just in therapy for me. I'm in therapy for her. I, you know, I, I was in therapy. Yes. Right. But like the work work of my therapy was being a parent, bringing out all of this, st- you know, like bringing yeah, out. It's this triggering. Unres- yeah. And that's the word. <laughs> but yeah, I had to deal with this or I was going to have my kid out there really messed up. You know, and it was just, yeah, dog, that, ugh, the effects. Shit's hard. Yeah, that shit is hard. Um, yeah. Also, I th- thought it was really interesting how it showed Eva's abuse or I, abuse. Eva's addictions. It came out of like undiagnosed medical issues right or mm. i mean maybe it was diagnosed but you know it wasn't like, well treated exactly she didn't have adequate care and it's that is that is just like oh well so many people self-medicate and i think that was that's one of the breakthroughs i had uh, in therapy as a younger person when, <sighs> when trying to understand the motivations of people around me and my mm. family and things like that was that a lot of folks people are just trying to fucking get by yeah, they're just trying to get and, through it. Yeah, and self-medicating is a way that that happens. Folks, again, don't have the tools, don't get the tools, don't have support systems that help them to them. I mean, I had my first fucking anxiety attack in the eighth grade. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody had no conversation with me about what that meant. They said just, I had a breakdown, and then I went to school the next fucking day, right? I cried for I don't know how many hours straight. There was no discussion of mental health. Nobody was trying to find me a therapist. We didn't have any fucking health insurance. So who the fuck was going to pay for it? Yeah. Like, 
And I did not turn to, you know, drugs or anything, but that's because I have seen so much addictive behavior in my family that I ain't never been, uh, I've always been afraid to do anything other than smoke weed because I'm afraid that a a switch is going to flick. Yeah. And you're, you are, but you're also aware of the fact that like, it could have been completely different. Like Mm -hmm. that first anxiety attack could have, you know, sent you someplace else, you know? Exactly. Exactly. I People self-medicate because they're just trying to get through and shit is hard and everybody doesn't have the resources. Again, privilege, yo. Privilege. Yeah. Um, after high school, both Eva and Shane went their separate ways and Eva pretty much like reinvented herself, right? She went to mm-hmm. a whole new city and just started over. Changed her name, kind of. <laughs> Which was, but you know, to me, I was like, girl, who your friends? <laughs> we too fucking knows. I mean, not even knows. He just like, I want to know you better, you know? <laughs> and so yeah. after a while, we going to, yeah. After a while, we going to, I'm going to know a little bit more <laughs> about you. Like, you ain't going to be able to just have a whole life in the background, it, you know? But here's the thing, man. It's it's not easy to keep things hidden, but I, like my best friend growing up, who you know very well, I didn't yeah. let her in on my situation growing up until I was good and grown and living in New York and she came to visit me. And I don't know why or how, but I ended up telling her about my, you know, and I saw this bitch five days a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And she didn't know anything because I kept it to myself because I was embarrassed and I took ownership of things that didn't belong to me because I was a child who had been put upon. And it is very easy or not easy, but it is a thing that you do yeah. because it is self-protective. Yeah. And so I 100% understand how her people didn't know. And shit, even as an adult, when I was in really bad situations, y'all ain't no True. shit. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. If it's in your nature to be a secret squirrel about your shit, then you will. Yeah. Well, y'all need one good Erica. Because I'll be... <laughs> you squirreling <laughs> shit away? I'm <laughs> digging <laughs> shit up. I'm digging <laughs> shit up. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about all the other stuff. But let's get to why we're here. <laughs> The sea. Oh, well, you know what? <laughs> the people that are having sex. Okay, Shane and Eva, their relationship. Mm. So, essentially, they were... I don't know if I'm going to be giving too much away. So, the seven days in June are literally just seven days in June. <laughs> like, yeah. And it was amazing to me. Like, as once I read it and kind of it all came together, I was like, wait. Oh, this in a week? Shit. What'd you say? Yeah. Also, T is just... <clears throat> the structure of this book is fantastic. Yes. And I love how it goes back and forth in time. And sometimes you don't know where you are in time. But the way that she weaves the story... Y'all, not only is this just like a sexy book, and not only does it tell a really important story, but it's just, it's, it's a good, really well written. Yeah. yeah. And I it's was just a great story. I listened to it on audiobook. Um, and it was, I, yeah, I couldn't put it down or couldn't stop listening. Stop listening. Yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah. I mean, I, I found myself, you know, in the middle of the night not sleeping because that's what I do sometimes, just reading, like running through chapters. It's just, it's just so good. And we but, read a lot of stuff to find things for this show and everything ain't great. But this, yeah. <laughs> so, this is a fantastic You book. know, I'm thinking like, because when I was reading it, it all came together that these seven days in June were literally like seven days. And these seven mm-hmm. days, like, again, just, just one small thing can change the course of your life. Like these seven days left such an impact on these two people mm-hmm. and they were teens like that's also the part that got me like they were like little tater tots little doodle bobs and it it just stuck they it that relationship well the what they went through and i guess the relationship itself just 
stuck and became, I don't know if it was a gold standard for other relationships, but it definitely was just one of those like. Yeah, that feels unhealthy. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Not, not the, uh, I mean, even the relation, not even when I say like the seven, I mean the the feeling, the connection between the two of them. Mm -hmm. The relationship, mm -hmm. unhealthy than a motherfucker. But the connection between the two of them became the gold mm -hmm. standard that it seemed like that they were both they like were chasing that, reaching for. Yeah, they were both chasing that in, mm -hmm. you know, subsequent relationships. For sure. Did you have a I think we uh, you didn't have like a profound high school love, yeah, did you? I was fucking around with Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> no. But I mean, Shane could have been looked at as terrible. It's true, but I don't think I ever really felt. You know, we've talked a lot on this show about how I would reach a point and I'd be done and I'd be like, I right, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> so I never, especially not at that age, was anybody where it felt like. Like I, I think that they, and we won't, we won't really delve into whether or not they are, because I don't want to spoil anything. I think that they think that they are soulmates mm -hmm. from really when they first met, and I never felt that way until now at my big age. And it wasn't an instant like we soulmates. No, exactly. <laughs> like <laughs> that's lightning in a bottle. Um, right. Yeah, I did not. And I mean, I think even when I was in in high school, I think I was pretty clear that like all this shit was temporary. You know, mm -hmm. like I didn't even give my I didn't even have the illusions of this shit like I'm going to be with this name forever. I'm sorry. Is that sh <laughs> Hey, boobs. Okay, he literally came and no, he's like I'm going to be on a show and right quick. To, Said he wants to uh, get <laughs> get rubs. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, he did. I didn't have any illusions whatsoever that like this was some like that any of these relationships in college were. I mean, in high school were gonna stick. Like, yeah, no, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I definitely never thought that. I think I always thought that they were for the time that they were for. It didn't mean that they didn't feel intense or that they didn't feel. Um, like yeah. they were really necessary Angsty. in, in yeah, the yeah. moment. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but I don't. I never, and I'm also never a person who ever like pictured their wedding or any of that kind of stuff. I ain't never found myself drifting into that fantasy with anybody back then. I don't think I've. I don't think I've ever pictured like a wedding with anyone. I've definitely pictured married life with people. Mm. You know, like oh, this is what we'll look like when we're old and gray together. But not like, that. what'd you say? I don't think I ever did that. Even when I got married, I just was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just evaluate this at the end of the year. <laughs> well, yeah. But Ooh. it was very, I mean, it, and it's, as a parent, I can only imagine how scary it is to watch your child, you know, be serious with someone or believe that this is like who they gonna be with I had a dream last night that my kid was putting her name beside the name of a kid who I think she has a crush on but she won't admit it <laughs> yeah I forgot about that oh like she goodness. was trying out her name next to his last name oh, gosh. in my dream and I was like that's cute that's cute <laughs> I wasn't freaking out, surprisingly, in the dream. I think he's a cute little boy. Oh, He's very sweet. Yeah. So. Yeah. He probably don't brush his teeth. But they're teeth. 10. But anyway. So, yeah. Um, right. Yeah. They're 10, so they don't brush your teeth. Um, But yeah, as a parent, I think that I would definitely be freaked out if my kid was trying to get serious, you know, be too serious or too intense with anyone at a I young I 100% would trot out all of my stories and be like, here's why this is not a good idea. But you know, we do have a few friends that have been with their, well, one person comes to mind. Um, She went to, she's not like super in the, in the circle, circle. but she's a, a friend of ours. Um, 
She's probably a friend of yours. No, mm-hmm. she's actually more your oh, she friend my than mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I mean, she's Why a friend, like but this? yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> but yes, and she like came to Howard with her boyfriend. I mean, didn't come with him, but you know, like she came to Howard. Everybody knew his name. So then I. So then when they got like when she left and they got married, it was like, oh shit, this shit was for real. Our I friend, mean, she's from Detroit. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. And um, cause to me, like, I I feel like I'm afraid for my kid to like miss out on life being caught up in a relationship. And maybe that's mm-hmm. unfair, but I just feel like that's you get in a relationship and you you nest and even if it's a healthy one you like start you know spending more time with one another and then it's like but you missing out on life you young do that boot up shit when you old and your knees don't work (laughs) (laughs) that's real and I mean I also think about the fact that the person who you are at 17 is not the person who you are at 27 is not the person who you are at 37. And there is a really great chance that y'all are going to grow in different directions. And the idea of binding yourself to someone who may not be, who may be a completely different person in a year in five years and 10 years. um, It's kind of frightening to me to do anything that feels hard to reverse. You know what I mean? Like yeah. marrying, having children, things that you can't just be like, I, um, <laughs> I'm out. It's a yeah. little too much. Like my partner and I were just talking about how I envy one of my exes because only for one reason, which is because when he got a divorce, it was that done. was it. Yeah, and like, he's never seen his ex wife again. He never had to. They ain't had no kids. They ain't own no property. They just. Got okay, a divorce bye. via the mail, like you know, like sent the paperwork and signed it, and then never had to see each other again. I'm like that's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I will agree. <laughs> that is yeah. how you do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so, yeah. yeah, I don't want them to get yours or mine to get into some shit that's hard. That 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 we got to call an attorney in and get them out of, or just like I mean. <laughs> I don't or that know. stunts their growth and that's keeps them I'm, from becoming the person that they're supposed exactly. to be. Exactly. And I guess that's my biggest concern. Like, you, there's so much that you're not going to experience because just, I mean, like, if you're just being a good partner and respectful and all that, like, I mean, I was, I was a disrespectful motherfucker to my own <laughs> body some of the time. <laughs> but, you know, and I think all of that helped me grow and become, you know, more of who I am and those experiences shaped me. And yeah, mm-hmm. I, I mean, even when we talk about like, when we're all reminiscing and talking about stuff, if they, like, I can tell with the periods where I was like, I'm like, oh, I must've been up under that nigga, you know? And I feel like I missed out, especially for Very some shit know. that didn't pan out, you know? <laughs> Yes, I have a lot of those moments like where I was absolutely booed up and y'all was in Miami somewhere shaking ass and I was with somebody who shaking did not deserve it. my. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I missed out for sure. And, you know, even if it's a good person and even if it is, like you said, a healthy relationship, I feel like there's some shit that you're not doing. If there's opportunity costs. Yeah. They come with tying yourself to somebody super early. Yeah. I said like a, uh, well said, like a business major. Um, Okay. So then Shane shows back up in Eva's life. They had like such a, such an effect on one another. And we find out, I'm giving all types of spoilers, but we find out that Shane's and Eva's relationship is kind of the source material for Eva's like huge erotica series. Like, so she has a series, I guess that could best be described as like Twilight, right? For adults. At this surface. It's, it is a vampire situation. It's a supernatural erotica uh, series, which we've covered quite a bit on the show, actually, yeah. those kind of series. So, um, but it's like massive, like, <sighs> like a big fucking deal yeah and yeah they we find out that like shane is the 
the source material. The and Shane is this like massive author, and we find out that Jean Viev slash Eva is his source material. And so they, which is so oddly romantic. That they were like yeah, writing they were to writing one writing to and about each other and dropping little hints in. And, and these are like massive books. So like yeah. everybody knows him. Like he like, did he win a book award, a national book award or something? I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, like his shit huge. was like if not, he's one he's definitely one of those folks. Yeah, but he's like one of those like huge names. And they just writing about each other. And they also both have success in in the same arena, but in very different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like also there's a bit of, uh, I mean, and we address this, we will address this when we talk to Tia about this. But I think there's also like a sense of, um, you know, erotica's play play, but she's probably outsold. (laughs) <laughs> you know exactly like, exactly you know and so it's just like man oh also i found lots of points in the book where there were lots of like womanist manifestos being said <laughs> like, especially by her daughter yes i was listening yes. on audiobook but i was like okay this part would have been highlighted a million times mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, on the candle. i can assure you that it was yes yeah i bookmarked so much stuff in this book too yeah it's just, probably more than any other that we've done for the show yes again really good book yeah. um okay you know what i want to talk about the six (laughs) okay yes so shane and eva they like meet up you know shane drops in eva's life and you know it definitely reminds okay so this might be too specific you might have been with a man with your man when this happened but do you remember the step show at howard where the q i'm not gonna name him by name but the queue walked through the crowd singing like omega sci-fi and it was like the lights were dark and it was this a proposal <laughs> no not the proposal it was oh, a okay. couple years after that and but this person did marry one of our chapter sorors okay and he like walked through like sweaty with no shirt on and i was like oh <gasps> And he was like, the spotlight was on him and he was like singing, oh my God, you know, type shit. <laughs> uh, That's what you saw when Shane was coming yeah. from the back of the room. <laughs> they were like, oh, oh, oh. And he like <laughs> sauntered up on stage and did a step. No, okay. Did some donkey kicks. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> Shane literally like drops into her life. Mm-hmm. And the next day, accidentally, yeah, he was not trying yeah. to. He was not trying to do that, but yeah. he did in such big fashion. Um, so then he shows up. At, he shows up there. Him and Eva are like, "What the fuck?" No one knows about their their past, so they kind of try to play it cool. But the next day, was it the next day? Yeah, the next day they meet up mm-hmm. for coffee and fucking. No, that's not how it happened. Oh. First they met in the diner. Oh, you know what? Yeah. And then she needed, was it when she needed help that she went to Yes. Let's not go too deep into that. I just said needed help. Just said needed needed help. help. Yes. Yeah. And they ended up. And then it was coffee and book. (laughs) Yeah. And you know what? That whole, the, um, what is it? The, the dream house idea Mm -hmm. that's so new york that's some new york shit that's some new york shit that would have got spread to dc and you know like like a year later yeah uh uh-huh (laughs) uh-huh but you know they used to do that at spa world right do like sleep yeah they had like a sleep room and they had to close it because spa world kept having like massive bed bug outbreaks Oh, because people would like bring their own stuff from home. So they had like, you know, it was like a soft place for people to sleep. But people would bring like their own pillows and blankies and stuff. And then they <laughs> getting bed bugs and 
Oh, no. I'm glad you never told me that before. No, but this wasn't, this wasn't like, this was in like a whole nother area that you would have never okay. been in. <laughs> Quit scratching your head. Like, you literally scratch it. Ooh, because I'm thinking about how many times I slept on that heated floor. Well, that is, it wasn't in the heated floor. It like, wasn't in the, yeah, you, yeah. It was like, did you ever get a massage with me at Spa World? Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like up that area. Like, you know how you oh, go okay. up this, Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, folks, for folks who do not know what Spa World is, <laughs> it's a Korean spa and bath. So, there's like pools. Of the blade different pool. different temperatures. The, yeah. So, you come in, you strip. Everybody is just mm-hmm. bucky naked. Bucky and naked. <laughs> and it's, it's separated. It's very much a binary situation. It's separated by, you know, male and female. And you Pains and badge. Yes, <laughs> which is got it's problematic all on its own. Um, but you go from pool to pool. They've got like like pools that have like jets that hit. Like if you want to massage your legs with the jets, you sit in this one little area. You can go over here if you need some cool some jets on your back. There's freezing pools. There's super hot pools. There's uh, wet saunas. There's dry sauna. There's some of everything. So you know and what's then, interesting? What? I really have a problem with swimming pools, right? Like it's hard like in general. Me, in, yeah, it's hard for me to enjoy a swimming pool because I just think about grossness, all them bodies, right? Yeah. Like people peeing. <laughs> I'd much rather be in the ocean. Yes, fish pee in the ocean. People I'm about pee to say, in the as ocean. Moana said, "Fish pee in you." Look, I pee in the ocean. <laughs> so, <laughs> Same. Like, if we're at the ocean and I just kind of walk off, I'm like, hey, don't follow me. Um, there's something about, like, the nature of it all. But I I really get uncomfortable in swimming pools. But mm-hmm. I fucks with Spa World. Like, I be in that little nest. I be in that little dirt bath. Like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> we all boiling together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have gone there. We have gotten high and gone there many times overnight. Mm-hmm. Always overnight. They got a good ass food, like authentic Korean oh. food. Yeah, so you go, you eat, you do all the pools. They got it's these ladies that will scrub you down, like scrub all the skin off. Yeah, of it's your like body. a body detail. Like they yeah. literally like get up under everything, and then you there's this this room. It's just this heated floor and these little. <laughs> it's like it is so sparse. It's like floor and a little hard pillow. Yeah, and and you lay down. <laughs> Be knocked out. Yo, I didn't got some of the best sleep on my and life. I am on that not floor. the type of person to just be like sleeping on random floors, except at Spy World. Yeah, because usually you have good. been in water for a couple of hours. Then you eat a really good food, eat, eat a really mm-hmm. good food, eat a really good meal, and then you just fall asleep. Yeah, and then and at like, night when like they turn the lights off, pass. yeah, yeah. yeah. Ugh, okay, just, yeah. but I, now I'm like, is this a post COVID? Yeah, no, they probably doing they yeah. probably doing well. Because I went to H Mart, and when I tell you H Mart was like. I was like, yo, I should have been shopping here all the time. Because, you know, all them little old Asian grannies, all of them wear their mask nine times, most of the time, any damn way. Mm. I'm about I, to say, what does HMR have to do besides being Korean? But that's interesting because they actually like yeah. enforcing. Gotcha. Yeah, they've been, you know, like I was um actually I was reading this article about how COVID spread slower in Asian communities. Because one, they had fucking take care of business and take care of each other. Well, and I mean, like, even like in like Chinatown, like DC, you know, like, Mm. and it's Mm -hmm. because they said they already have a culture. I feel really weird saying that, but you know, the people that live in these communities already have a culture of wearing masks a lot. Mm -hmm. And they heard about it from, you know, family members abroad. And so they were able to really like 
act quickly instead of just yeah. bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what's up. If anything, I'd be more than happy to because girl, I went into H. Well, I'm just thinking about that about it being that many people in close proximity and if folks are gonna wear masks in the pool and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And it's indoors. So But anyway, so um not sure oh dream bed dream spa yes dream art whatever the name of it is yeah dream house dream house but yeah that's some total new york shit um they were not supposed to be having sex of course they did and can you imagine how they got caught like not even like had they got caught but like shane and eva got caught fucking yeah it would be like when that dude got caught uh jerking his meat on Zoom. Jeffrey Tubin. <laughs> His last name was Tubin? Yeah. That definitely sounds like <laughs> Tubin. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God. Yes, they, yeah, it would have been a big deal because they both like have these massive fandoms and whatnot. So it would have been a Because really even when they like, caught. when they were like spotted together, like, it was a big, deal. there was a whole like Pottermore, you know. The Harry Potter fan site. Like, folks was, like, putting shit together quick. And it was like, he's ass. I know. We don't like J.K. I Rowling. I just... It's so sad that she fucked it up for us. Fucking turf. Like, yeah. why? Yeah. Um, yeah, we... Yeah, she fucked it up for us. It's but, hard. Yeah. Like, my kid is partway through the series. I mean, the books are bought now, so it is what it is. But, like, then that has to be accompanied by a conversation of why we don't fuck with this white woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, yep. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, do you have anything else to add? I don't think so. Just so this is awesome, and y'all should read it. Y'all should read. It's, y'all really need to read it. Like, yeah. And Tia's coming on next week, so we get to dig into it some more with her. Yes. Um, yeah. No. Legit. Like, read this. Read this book. And okay. And, sorry, it's, when I first started reading it, I think I told Karen, like, this is a lot. Like, I wasn't ready for all of this, right? Mm -hmm. But it's so good, and it's not tragic. Yes. And so, it, it it felt good to read it. So, don't get discouraged. Oh, sorry. You can talk about things like generational trauma and PTSD and all of the, you know, the things that we warn about at the top of the show, but it doesn't have to be uh, 12 years of slave. It's not right. It's not <laughs> trauma porn. It's like, so uh, this morning I didn't even get to look at the trailer, but I saw that there's some movie called Karen that came out with old girl from, um, you know, whoop that trick what's that movie you know what I'm talking about Pence Tucky uh who also oh yeah played. yeah so anyway but it's everybody's like oh this is a fucking get out knockoff like rather than you know it's like it's trying to deal in the the trauma and the horror but what it ends up being is just like making entertainment out of black suffering basically lean away this- um sorry yes 100% <laughs> don't fuck with her don't like her work Ugh, done. Um, yes, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this book is not that. No, it's 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 great. I yeah. We there's so much to dig into about this, and so I had to kind of you know, but there's a lot. So y'all need to really, really yeah. get on this one and tell us what y'all think about it. Please do. So, yeah. what's it's next? to talk about what's turning us on. <laughs> we gonna pay some bills and we'll be right back. <laughs> hey y'all. Today's a great day to start your own podcast. Whether you're looking for a new marketing channel, have a message you want to share with the world, or just think it'd be fun to have your own show like us, podcasting is an easy, inexpensive, and fun way to expand your reach online. And Buzzsprout is hands down the easiest and best way to launch, promote, and track your podcast. 
Your show gets put online and listed in all the major podcast directories like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, literally everything within minutes of finishing and uploading your recording. We use it here for the turn on and I can truly attest to the fact that it's pretty fucking dope. Podcasting isn't hard when you have the right partners and the team at Buzzsprout is passionate about helping you succeed. So join over 100,000 podcasters like us who are already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. Just click the link in our show notes and you'll be able to get your own account set up. And if you sign up for a paid plan, you'll get a $20 Amazon gift card and support our show. Let's create something great together. Sign up for Buzzsprout today. Okay, so what you got, Killa? Okay, so let me preface this by saying. <laughs> have you used it? I have. Um, oh, okay. So I feel like, I don't feel like I have a lot of toys, but I feel like I've tried a whole lot of stuff. And so I went specifically for this season looking for things that I had never heard of before um, to try them out so that we could talk about them and see if they work for our listeners. So the thing that I found that I had never heard of, (laughs) that I had never heard of and didn't know was a thing. So you know how they have like penis pumps that folks use to enlarge? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's, I mean. Austin Powers had one in his bag. Yes. And there are tons of them on like sex toy sites like a million different mm-hmm. ones because i think that cis men's um eagles are fragile and very much tied to their penis and so they have and you talk to any options. woman and she's like i don't care about size it's about how you use it exactly. how you wield that thing 100 well, any person that has sex with they will say with, yeah with penises yeah and uh but so this is a pussy pump. <laughs> Why did it have to make noise? <laughs> <laughs> it fell apart, but I just put it back together. So this okay. is the part that goes over your labia. And then this is you know, this is what you pump up. So I'm I'm looking at it on the site and I'm looking at reviews and I'm like, huh, okay. How do you use it? So you lie down for me it absolutely required a partner um (laughs) you put this over your labia and Uh you put some lube around it so that it releases and so that it doesn't hurt (laughs) (laughs) important key that should be Uh like a a suction on my uh (laughs) in my bathroom (laughs) And it's got like a quick release valve valve on it or whatever. And so you form Mm -hmm. a seal and then Mm -hmm. you pump. And so it helped with my partner because he could actually see if it was on there the right way. And it took us a couple of tries to get it on the right way. And then he pumped it. Start slow. One pump at a time and check to make sure your partner's doing okay. And uh, <laughs> what happens is it literally expands into the cup. And so uh-huh. I was looking at the reviews like, okay, why do people do this? So I found that there's like a whole like fetish around like fat pussies and that this increases the size. So you had a lot of people in the comments like, yeah, I use this on my partner because I like to get a fat pump pussy and this does that for me so so but it's not like a it don't like make your clip feel funny so or i mean feel where, good when i'm yes yeah. so what it does because i'm like i'm not doing this if you just, just like a fat somebody, pussy right and so but that yeah. was what i kept uh-huh. seeing in the comments but then i was like well what could this do for me <laughs> so what it does is it brings all the blood to your labia Ding, 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 yeah, ding, yeah, ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it makes everything super sensitive. So then did he eat after that? No, then we, we, went, we went to, to the penetration. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you need, no, you need to do that next, okay? Oh, well, maybe that'll help me because, you know, I never get homework. there that way. Yeah, I was about okay. to say homework. Okay, uh-huh. Cool. Homework. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, we went, we went 
the rest of the way. Um, but it it just made everything extra sensitive. Everything. And it was fantastic. Not something that I would have honestly gone looking for if it weren't for the fact that I was just looking for something different that I hadn't tried before. But pleasantly yeah. surprised. Uh-huh. I lie. Easy cleanup. You just wash this little thing. Psh, psh, easy peasy. Just go slow one pump <laughs> something tells me something tells me y'all didn't <laughs> no no this is experience we, we went okay. slowly but it was at first it wasn't seated right and you got a lot of bones your pelvic bones down there so your body will tell you if it's not quite seated right because it'll be pushing up against your bones so then we released it and repositioned it and started again um it was nice unexpected okay. so that is what's uh right. turn us on this week we'll put a link you know i think sometimes things like well i think what scares most people shy what makes most people shy away from sex toys or like just the look of them right like yeah i mean this is a bit that, of a contraption it yeah it definitely lo- it looks like those little beards so things. folks yes for folks who can't who are not watching us on youtube or the various places it is like a little cup and it is hard plastic and it's got a length of tubing maybe i don't know a foot 14 inches long and a purple um like little hand pump on it yeah that you squeeze like a little ball pump I like it. I'm gonna have to get myself one. Yeah, it was. We will include a link yeah. in the show notes. We will. Yeah. So check it out. <laughs> We're done. Alrighty. Well, <laughs> I don't like. I don't like. Okay. Well, that wraps up this week's uh, episode of the Turn On. It does. Yeah. This is Erica Killer, two ho hosts making it clap. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> This episode was produced by us, Kenry and Erica, and edited by Ballistic. The theme music is from Brazy. Hit subscribe right now in your favorite podcast app and at youtube.com slash the turn on podcast so you'll never miss an episode. Then follow us on Twitter at the turn on pod and Instagram at the turn on podcast. And you can find links to books, transcripts, guest info, what's turning us on, and other fun stuff at theturnonpodcast.com. And don't forget to email us at theturnonpodcast at gmail.com with your book recommendations and your pressing sex and related questions. And you can support the show by leaving us a five-star review, buying some merch, or becoming a patron of the show. Just head to theturnonpodcast.com to make that happen. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. Holla.